February 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 12 from the New Testament. Meanwhile, when many thousands of the crowd had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, and nothing is secret that will not be made known. So then whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in private rooms will be proclaimed from the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have nothing more they can do. But I will warn you whom you should fear. Fear the one who, after the killing, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Aren't five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten before God. In fact, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not be afraid, you are more valuable than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before God's angels. But the one who denies me before men will be denied before God's angels. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But the person who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. But when they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers, and the authorities, do not worry about how you should make your defense or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you must say. Then someone from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator between you two? Then he said to them, Watch out and guard yourselves from all types of greed because one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. He then told them a parable. The land of a certain rich man produced an abundant crop. So he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grains and my goods. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of goods stored up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, celebrate. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded back from you. But who will get what you have prepared for yourself? So it is with the one who stores up riches for himself, but is not rich toward God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For there is more to life than food and more to the body than clothing. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add an hour to his life? So if you cannot do such a very little thing as this, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the flowers grow. They do not work or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon, in all his glory, was clothed like one of these. And if this is how God clothes the wild grass, which is here today and tomorrow is tossed into the fire to heat the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you people of little faith? So do not be overly concerned about what you will eat and what you will drink, and do not worry about such things. For all the nations of the world pursue these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, pursue his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father is well pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide yourselves purses that do not wear out a treasure in heaven that never decreases, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Get dressed for service and keep your lamps burning. Be like people waiting for their master to come back from the wedding celebration so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. Blessed are those slaves whom their master finds alert when he returns. I tell you the truth. He will dress himself to serve, have them take their place at the table, and will come and wait on them. Even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night and finds them alert, blessed are those slaves. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Then Peter said, 
Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for everyone? The Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his household servants to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds at work when he returns. I tell you the truth. The master will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave should say to himself, My master is delayed in returning, and he begins to beat the other slaves, both men and women, and to eat, drink, and get drunk, then the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not foresee, and he will cut him in two, and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will, but did not get ready or do what his master asked, will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know his master's will and did things worthy of punishment will receive a light beating. From everyone who has been given much, much will be required. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, even more will be asked. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is finished. Do you think I have come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on there will be five in one household divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Jesus also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, A rainstorm is coming, and it does. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat, and there is. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but how can you not know how to interpret the present time? And why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? As you are going with your accuser before the magistrate, make an effort to settle with him on the way, so that he will not drag you before the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will never get out of there until you have paid the very last cent. God, one of my favorite parts about this this chapter is you talk about not being fearful of those who can kill the body, and then you go on to talk about, and oh, by the way, uh, you don't need to worry either. <laughs> when you talk about not being fearful of those who can, who can physically kill us, uh, I think about that verse a lot, because it's not only fearful of somebody who can kill us, but it's being distracted by people who are fearful of what we talk about when we talk about you, um, who try and stop us, who agitate us, who try and condemn us online. Uh, same type of thing. We have no reason to fear. We have no reason to be concerned in the slightest, nor worry or take up time with drama in dealing with, with those situations. We can definitely pray for those people, uh, which is probably the best recourse in those situations. But I love what uh, Max Lucado said, uh, one of my favorite Christian writers. He said, God wants us to know we are saved. For saved people are dangerous people, willing to face off with the world, unafraid of the consequences, since they know that whatever happens, they will have eternal life. So no matter, no matter what happens on this earth, no matter what anybody does to me, I have eternal life with you, God. So why in the world would I be bothered with the little things of this earth, or even the big things, such as somebody threatening to kill me, to set my mind on higher things than things of this world? Sometimes we just get so caught up in our day-to-day -day existence, and that's when that worry part settles in. And it's so much of this chapter is about you need to look forward. You need to, to understand your time here on this, on this earth is such a short amount of time. For you to get caught up in all the trappings of this world and get sidetracked with drama and fear and worry and anger and jealousy. Why are you doing those things when you get to spend eternity with me in heaven? I really love this chapter, God. You talk about this same exact theme in so many different ways. About how we should not only uh, not worry and not be fearful, but we should also be ever-present. 
that at any given time, we could be stopped here on earth. Our lives here on earth could be completed. You could choose to end our lives at any given time. So why are we storing up anything here on earth, whether it's goodness or money or drama? Why are we storing up anything here on earth when all that really matters is what we store up in our heavenly riches? That we need to keep our eyes on what is truly important, which is our future with you. Not our future next week or our future a couple of years from now with possibly the people that are in our lives now and possibly not with the people in our lives. We truly are not only saved people, but we're very transient people in the sense that we are here for such a short time. We are here to proclaim your glory, to glorify you, to praise you, to worship you, to tell other people about you. And then we're done. And then we get our amazing reward, which is spending eternity with you. God, today, help us keep our eyes on what is important. Not fear, not worry, not drama, not the little things of this earth that can sidetrack us off of the big picture. Let us know today that we are saved people. We are willing to face off against the world. We are unafraid of the consequences that the world might have for us. Because all you have for us is love and kindness and grace and mercy. In your son's name we pray. Amen.